Venom the Madness. I have a soft spot for this era. I'm going to warn you guys right now. I had this issue, uh, the number one issue, and it had like a glow-in-the-dark tongue uh, that like uh, was a really interesting gimmick at the time. And I bought it when I was a kid, and I really loved it. So <laughs> enjoyable stuff. Venom at the time was a bunch of miniseries. And, um, and so Venom launched like that rather than uh, doing its own series. And, and each one kind of had its own feel and own writing team and own art team. So, you know, they were all different uh, for the most part. I'd say uh, it looks like uh, for the like um, I'd say over the, the next two volumes of this Venom series that um, what you call it? Uh, Larry Hama did a lot of the writing, which is useful. Uh, but beyond that, like, I mean, there's, you know, the consistency really wasn't there that much. You get an Iron Man issue where he fights against Iron Man at first. And this is the same contents as the Venomnibus Volume 1. It's like the second section of it after he, like, fought with Spider-Man. He's not going to fight with Spider-Man anymore. And so you get a couple different uh, looks at different superheroes that he's working with here. Dark Hawk's another one. And these would be fun. Uh, I would love to get a full Dark Hawk collection and a Night Watch collection, which is the next one that comes through here. Very interesting superheroes, and I, I really like these issues, actually, at the time. Uh, they have some neat concepts and some neat background characteristics to them. Uh, Venom has, and you'll see the, the Golden Gate Bridge here, gone out to San Francisco by this point. That happened in the last volume with the Lethal Protector series. This two-part Dark Hawk series, uh, uh, Venom come, pops in. And I feel like Venom is honestly just being used as a device to... Uh, uh, make uh, Dark Hawk uh, sell more at this point. So the madness, uh, here it is. Uh, and of course, there's the juggernaut on the cover. And uh, the three-part series where like Venom gets hit, uh, like with a thing that like makes the symbiote go a little crazy. I don't love the art in this one so much. Um, this was uh, an okay storyline overall. You kind of uh, learn a little bit about Venom's past in here. And uh, as you see, the the uh, the symbiotes uh, really gotten absolutely crazy at this point. And Nascenti wrote this, who did a great Daredevil run, and Kelly Jones on the art. So it's really distinct looking. Um, but it doesn't feel like, a, you know, that kind of 90s style Venom so much. Uh, it, it's it got a, almost an 80s style art to it uh, that's a little different through here. And um, you see Venom just like kind of you know, fight his internal demons uh, through this issue uh, before he finally comes back up. This lady is part of like an underground community in San Francisco. And this is a really interesting part about where Venom's at right now. And this uh, this happened, this really starts to pick up in this enemy within. They, It's like this underground community is like exists and they have a whole underground city basically. And uh, this one starts out with him uh, getting into Halloween uh, and he's he's mad at the kids because they, they're wearing superhero costumes. There's a guy running for mayor of San Francisco, and he's like unleashing like weird little goblins all over the city uh, in this one. Uh, Morbius shows up, and Demo Goblin, who's like a hobgoblin interdimensional bad, even worse thing, shows up. These little like goblins are super creepy. So you got like this gremlins kind of thing as he goes underground and uh, and then has to eventually save the city from them uh, over the course of this miniseries. Really fun stuff. Uh, I enjoyed this a lot. And again, I don't know if this was just because I had this series as a kid or not, uh, but I liked it, and I liked where it was going. Like, this, Venom's got almost a girlfriend uh, from this underground group. He's got, there's these cultists that he has to deal with the, the goblins, too. Classic comic fair, uh, I think. And uh, that's that's uh, where, it, uh, where it goes. In this one, uh, Venom ends up fight, tumbling with the Hulk, as it's called Venom versus Hulk, number one. And uh, it's, a, it's a knockdown drag out, as you expect with a Hulk issue. Very nice deal. Um, the girlfriend there like really like doesn't like that he's Venom. She likes Eddie Brock and she and Venom scares her. And so that's a really interesting dynamic to have with the character here. And this one is uh, by Carl Potts. And this one's got uh, this like team of assassins uh, out here. Some of them have like some Iron Man armor and they're going after this guy named Mace and Eddie Brock kind of gets tangled in the middle of this uh, between like these two. Now his girlfriend gets tangled up in this as well. And uh, eventually he ends up hunting them down. And uh, of course, the good guys win through this. Here's our Night Watch issue where we get Night Watch. This is the fifth issue of this series. Like I said, I'd love a collection of this just to read this all the way through. It's pretty fun. Uh, and Night Watch is an interesting character, just like Dark Hawk as well. 
The art's like not the best in this one. You could tell that it's like a little wonky and uh, cheesier compared to the other stuff, cheaper. And, uh, and then uh, a second Night Watch issue uh, before we get into the final trilogy, the final um, mini series for Venom in this. And this one, I believe, is a Larry Hama one, Knights of Vengeance. And he's got this character. He's not Ghost Rider. I'm not sure what's going on in Ghost Rider at this point, but he's uh, he's he's called Vengeance. And he teams up with Ven with Venom like these aliens kidnap his girlfriend and, the, and their pals. And they have to, like, rescue them. And they're hunted, like, as, like, for sport, kind of. Uh, and if they win, they survive. If they don't win, they don't survive. And uh, it's it's a very... Oh, I'm sorry. This one's by Howard Mackey and Ron Lim. I like Ron Lim's art quite a bit. So this, uh, this made me feel good. I didn't actually have this one when I was a kid. Uh, but this was a pretty standard knockdown drag-out fair with Venom fighting these aliens. And I enjoyed it quite a bit, too. Uh, and, of course... His uh, girlfriend's freaked out by it, but she is, um, you know, kind of with him in the end. And it makes for a nice Venom backstory here, which is fun. Unfortunately, in the next volume, they're going to abandon the San Francisco concept altogether. And uh, it won't matter anymore. None of those characters will ever show up again. <laughs> so uh, here it is, 1993 to 1994. These are some of the first Venom miniseries. Uh, of course, uh, Lethal Protectors first. Uh, enjoyable by itself, uh, but, you know, I mean, you kind of got to know who Venom is, I guess. All the stories are pretty self-contained. Like I said, that Lethal Protector does uh, develop uh, these side characters that are in this that don't end up mattering later, but they do in this. I have a soft spot for it, like I said. Had a lot of fun with it. Very fast reads, and uh, I call this a 8 out of 10 overall. Leave a comment down below with what you think about this. Hit that like and subscribe button. We'll be back soon.